Frequency capping is a feature in Google Ads that can limit the amount of times users can see your ad. You may do it because after reviewing the information, people drop off in performance after seeing your ads X amount of times. Or you may already know that you don't want to have people getting sick of seeing your brand over and over and over again. Well, this feature is available in two campaign types within Google Ads, display and video. We'll show you where to find this feature when you're creating a campaign. Also, we're going to talk about on the video side some changes that are coming that really affect how you can use frequency capping for your efforts. And then we'll wrap it up by talking about some of the columns you can add to review your impression frequency information. For this demo, I'm going to start off talking about frequency capping in your display campaigns. With display campaigns, you cannot adjust any of the frequency capping settings while you're building the campaign. Your display campaign has to already be created. So in this case, I'll just go to one of our display campaigns, click on the gear icon, which is your settings, and then I'll choose additional settings. And there we see frequency management. Google's going to have this as the recommended amount where Google would control how your frequency is optimized. But when you're reviewing the reports and you have a set number in mind, you can manually control this setting. So at the campaign level for this display campaign, you can see that we can manage impressions for each individual ad, each ad group, or the entire campaign. This gives us more levers to pull, but what you do need to understand is that you can only pick one. So let's say I did want to choose frequency capping at the ad level. Notice there's no other option for me to add additional layers. I can't set a cap for an ad group, but then also set a different cap for each individual ads. You're just going to have to pick one, see how it works, and then adjust or optimize later. So I just picked with each ad, and then I'll tell Google how many impressions I'd like the ad to have. Default was five. I'll just leave it as is. And then what is the rotation of the cap? Is it five times per day, five times per week, or five times per month? Now with a smaller amount like this, I'd probably leave it towards like five a day. Understand we didn't look at any of the metrics or columns. We'll get to that later on. But it's also important to note what Google considers as an impression. Just so you're aware, for display campaigns, only viewable impressions will count. It is possible that a display ad could appear on a web page, but if it's further down the page and the user never scrolls to that point, that won't count towards any of your impressions that you are using in frequency capping. For whatever reason, if you wanted to see, let's do the whole campaign. I can still add in my number and our options do not change. Now Google states, by default, they use third-party cookies, but we know what's slowly happening to those. If they are not available, then first-party cookies are used to approximate impressions. I have to stress, approximate. Based on your account averages, Google's going to assume the amount of average impressions based on historical data, as well as any current information, and whatever audience signals Google can pull. So that's how you can look at it from the display campaign view. But frequency capping can also be set for video campaigns. I have one here. I'm going to try to find one that we use for a demo that's a little bit more recent. Again, I click the gear icon in my settings, go down to additional settings, and here we see frequency capping. But right away, you probably notice that the settings are different. For video campaigns, frequency capping can only be set at the campaign level. And of course, videos are different than images. So when we're talking about frequency capping, we can either look at capping impression frequency or capping the view frequency. Going back up to impressions, here we can enter in a number, let's say 10 per day, but here we get the option to add another one. I wish this feature was there for the display campaigns pulling these numbers out of thin air, but essentially I would let Google know for this video campaign, I want to cap it at 10 impressions per day and 50 impressions per week. Even for a video campaign, I think that might be high, unless you're really changing your video creative. Okay, now scrolling down, here's view. We also get to add multiple layers, five per day, and then this one I'll do 10 per week. Okay, we know where these settings are, but now let's talk about what impressions and views mean for video campaigns. It seems pretty straightforward, but depending on what type of video campaign you're running, there's a clear difference. See, I'm trying to look at what I have here. Okay, this is marketing objective, in this case won't matter. So let's say you have an in-feed video campaign where it shows up either as a recommended video, someone scrolling options in the feed, hence the name, on YouTube, All right? An impression is just having the ad be visible because the user has to actually click or tap on it to start viewing the video. So as soon as the video watch page loads, that counts as a view for an in-feed campaign. And again, just seeing the ad would be an impression for an in-feed campaign. For an in-stream video campaign, a view is only counted if the user watches the whole ad or watches at least 30 seconds of the ad. 
So let's say you're running a 30 second video campaign, a user watches 10 seconds and skips on it, that's only an impression, that's not a view. So you have to keep in mind, people could still be technically seeing your ad a lot, but it's not actually counting as a view for an in-stream campaign. That could totally change how you may wanna approach frequency capping depending on what ads you're running. And notice one thing within the settings here, Google does let you run both impression frequency capping and view frequency capping at the same time. This is something you may wanna really look into and consider if you're running skippable in-stream ads, because there's a good chance people are still seeing a good amount of your videos. But if you're only capping at the view, depending on how often and how quickly people are skipping your video, you still might be getting in front of them a lot. Also, if the videos that you are using within this campaign are used in other video campaigns, Google is aware of that and it counts those other video campaign views and impressions towards any campaign frequency cap. Okay, I'm gonna head back to the main campaign section because unlike display, if I start creating a new campaign, let's just go without a goals guidance, heading down to video, keep it at views and I'll click continue. I'm gonna keep scrolling until we find additional settings and then there's frequency capping. So with display, like I said, you have to have the campaign created first. With video campaigns, you can set the frequency capping for both impressions and views while you're building a new video campaign. Let's say you've been running video campaigns for a while. You see consistent data on where you see performance drop off, whether it's by views or by impressions. You can proactively launch any new campaign with these settings already in place. Okay, so I'm going to X out of this draft and maybe look at creating a new campaign again. And here we're going to stick with video. This is something I want you to be aware of because in the video campaign world, there are big changes coming. Right when the announcement occurred, I created a video about how video action campaigns are being transitioned into demand gen campaigns. If you didn't hear about that announcement and you run video campaigns, you definitely need to watch this video because the change is happening right now. But essentially, any of your campaigns that have an objective of sales, leads, or website traffic will be automatically converted at some point to demand gen. And then eventually, if you're creating a new campaign and wanting to use these objectives, you won't be able to create a video campaign. It'll have to be demand gen. Why is that important? Well, if I go to my demand gen campaigns, just choose one and I'll click on the settings, you'll see these are the entire settings. There aren't any additional settings. And what's missing from demand gen campaigns? Frequency capping. That means any sales, leads, or website traffic video campaigns that you've fine-tuned by either capping impressions or views will be gone. You can try to recreate the same campaign. I'd look at creating it without a goals guidance if you want to maintain much more control as well as some of the traditional video campaign settings. But that is a big shift in some of the most popular video objectives. I had to include it in this video just so you're aware. And if you still want to test out demand gen, fine. I recommend creating a new campaign now in demand gen and testing it and compare it to your current campaigns with frequency capping in place to potentially see the difference in performance. If demand gen is nowhere near as good as the campaigns you create, then you know you're going to have to shift to a campaign without a goals guidance to try to maintain that performance. It's not going to be a guarantee, but really we don't have any other choice. Okay, I had to pull up an actual client account because we actually need to see some metrics so I can show you these columns. But there are a few column options. In this case, we're looking at video campaigns that we can use to better give us information on what you may want to set as a frequency cap. So if you go to columns, there are a few options. There's some default ones here with reach metrics. Overall unique users is helpful to look at in this case. But here we see average impression frequency per user. This column is also available. Actually, it's the only other one available for display campaigns. The other three, when you look at it for seven days, 30 days, and the frequency distribution, these three are gonna be for video campaigns only. If I scroll over a little bit, here we see the frequency distribution. So the distribution columns, this whole thing going one, two, three, four, five, ten, those six columns are all technically one column selection, just showing you the different breakouts. But it's the minimum number of times a person saw the ad, one, two, three, four, five, and ten times. These are pulling based on the selected date range that I had. Also keep in mind, if someone saw the ad ten times for this campaign, that same person will also be counted in all the previous distribution columns. All right, it's showing you the total number of users that fall within these columns. Google says frequency distribution only shows if you're looking at 31 days or less. So you need to soak in those metrics from a smaller date range. It makes sense. Frequency distribution is going to show you total number of users, and the average ones show you, you guessed it, an average. 
admit may not be the best example because while I have to blur out the campaign names, all three of them are very, very introductory, high level awareness campaigns. And with a limited budget in each of them, our frequency isn't too high. If I start to see very high frequency numbers within the past 30 days, I'm gonna use this information to be like, if my client's budget is limited, or they really are going for total reach in general, and you're seeing very high average frequency per user numbers, this is gonna give me better information on what my cap number should be. Just keep in mind, these are impressions, not video views. They don't have these view frequency per user columns. I would just look at my overall video view numbers, kind of set my own averages. But that's how frequency capping is currently used in Google Ads. Display, purely impression-based, and you must create the campaign first. Frequency capping for video campaigns can be either by impression or views, and you can do it either while you're building the campaign or after the campaign goes live. And of course, just be very careful with your video action campaigns and understanding that you are losing frequency capping when you're rolling them over to demand gen. If there are any other questions, on frequency capping in Google Ads for video or display, please let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching our video. We really appreciate it. If you liked it, give us a thumbs up below. If you really liked it, maybe think about subscribing to the Paid Media Pros YouTube channel and you'll get alerted every time a new video drops. If you really, really liked it, you can help support the channel by checking out some of the t-shirts that we're wearing on our merch shelf, as well as looking at the super thanks button.